What's going on everyone? It's your boy Ethan. Welcome back to another poker vlog. Today we're playing at their very first time checking out the Venetian action. Playing 3-5 and it's a pretty fun game. We start off the session super late DJ hours around midnight 1 a.m. So um, bear with us. Action's gonna get wild. Before we get into the hands though, just want to give a huge shout out to Solve for Why. I have been training and learning a lot about cash games. Learning a ton from their homeschool 2.0 where they go through a bunch of different cash game strategies from pre-flop, post-flop, equilibrium, all that fun stuff. And uh, safe to say, after my 10K punt, I had to find a way to just try to avoid 10K punts moving forward. So because of that, they've been super helpful, learned a lot from their training site and material. Click the link down in the description below or in the pinned comment to get a promo code to get a percentage off of the site in their subscription. It helps support the channel for sure. Also, I'm just really happy to be an affiliate and a part of them because honestly, there's not really a whole lot of better people to learn cash games from than Matt Berkey himself. So all the content has helped me change up my game and tighten things up a little bit because Try to not be as spewy as possible. Hopefully you guys see that in this video and all the cash game videos moving forward because the homeschool and software material have been a big part of my success. So um, yeah, if you want to click the link down in the description below and get some information, affiliate link in the pinned comment. Let's get into the cash game hands. Here at the Venetian, blinds are $3 and $5. One of the first hands in, we pick up pocket nines and plus one. I raise things up to $20 and well, welcome to the table. We get four players to call around. This place definitely seems action packed already. Five ways the flop comes, six, seven, deuce, two diamonds. Somehow we flopped an overpair with nine. So pretty standard way to play this hand when action checks to me. I throw out a bet of $75, betting a little bit on the larger side into four other players. Somehow all four players fold. So no complaints here. Scooping up the first pots with chips coming our way. Let's get it. In the next dicey spot with ace king off suit in the small blind, there's a button straddle and there are three players who limp. Well, onto me with the $10 button straddle, we're out of position, we're sizing way up and this time we size to $75. Looks like um $75, not big enough it seems because two of the limpers make the call, then back onto this button straddler, he makes the call as well. So multi-way to a flop again, oh man. Flop comes queen 10-10 rainbow. We've got two overs and eight gut shots, and that's about it for us. So out of position, I decide to check action checks around to this button player with a massive stack who covers the whole table. He throws out a very small bet of $55. Well, given this sizing, it's pretty much like a free turn, essentially acting like a check. Um, definitely can't turn down this offer. So I make the call and neither do the other two players. So still, they all make the call and four ways still to a turn. Turn comes Brick City, five of hearts. Once again, action checks to this button player. He throws out another bet, but sizing up a little bit this time to 175. Unfortunately, with this price and this brick turn, we're gonna have to get out of the way and fold. All the other players fold as well. And a hand or two after, this button player tells us that he had queen 10, flopped boat. This player is running pretty hot. And yeah, like I said, action city on this table though with big stacks. In this third hand, we folded for way too long, at least an hour passes before we get into this hand. With ace queen offsuit and plus one, I opened it up to $25 on this action table. Let me tell you, there's been a lot of action here and we haven't been a part of it. Let's start now and here with this raise, the small one makes the call. Uh, I call him any two for a particular reason. You'll see why later. Now the big blind throws out a three bet of $115. Fun fact, this player just got aces two times in a row, so there's no way that I think that this guy can have three premiums in a row right now, right? No shot. Ace, queen, offsuit, we're in position of this guy. I make the call and this player in the small blind called any two, he folds. We're going heads up to a flop of ace, four, five, two hearts. He bets out $25 with about $250 behind. Yeah, like I said, let me, let me backtrack. He throws out a C bet of $25. With 250 in stack, um, yeah, we're not gonna do anything but raise here with top pair and good kicker. I size to 125, pretty much trying to commit his stack. He does end up ripping it all in and we're never going to be folding here. Um, let's make the call, playing for stacks, off to a runout. Okay. The turn and rivers come Jack Jack, so Indifferent about that, I show my ace queen. He's mux and we scoop this pot. Nice to win this one after being card dead for a while. 
Next dicey spot, queen nine of diamonds in the cutoff. There's once again a button straddle. Any two, my nickname, in early position, limps. I put in a raise to $50 now in position and it folds around to this early position player, my nickname, Any two. He makes the call with about $250 behind. Going to a flop of king, queen, four, two hearts, and a diamond. He checks to me and I uh, accidentally throw out a bet of $10. Honestly, I just thought I was shuffling green chips. I flicked them out there. I'm a little silly for this one, but for $10, I don't think this is a price he can give up. He makes the call for 10, we're off to a turn. Turn comes the king of clubs. He checks to me and given this misclick on the flop, I'm not really sure how to play my hand anymore. I decided to just check this one back and see what happens. The river is a six, pretty inconsequential. This player now obliges with a bet of $50. Well, we've got a pair of queens, we're never folding, so I make the call. Any two shows us four deuce off suits. Like I said, you guys will find out why he's called any two. This is one of those reasons, called a $50 preflop raise with four deuce, and I think he was value betting the river. I'm not really sure, but we'll take down this pot. The following hand, picking up pocket tens in under the gun. There is a button straddle once again, so I raise it up to $40. Action folds around to this button player who decides on making the call, so we're gonna play out of position. Flop comes ace-king, six, two hearts. Not loving this swap at all, but still, I think we gotta see about this one. Not sure why, but we're doing it. We throw out a bet of $30, and this player makes the call. The turn comes a five, so when he calls my bets on the flop, it just seems too likely that we're beat here. So we just shut down and check. Surprisingly, he checks it back, so let's see a river. There was the nine of spades, so a card under our pair. I'm just praying to get the showdown now. Somehow we could be good. I check, he checks back, and I show my pocket tens. And somehow, some way, this player throws his cards into the muck. We win? Thanks, dealer. Appreciate that. We'll take the chips. In the next interesting spot, picking up pocket nines once again. This time we're in the small blind. There is an undergun open to $20. Cut off and button, make the call, and now on to me. We're in the small blind, we're out of position. We've been showing how action heavy this table is. So I throw out a raise to $125, trying to isolate the field, trying to hopefully just take down the dead money or maybe see a flop. Well, plan goes out the window when the big blind right to my left makes the call. Can't take down this pot preflop if the big blind immediately calls. Action folds to the button who calls as well. Interesting action here, but still going to a flop three ways. Let's see what happens. The flop comes queen, jack, four, rainbow. In a three bet pot here, out of position for us to act. Uh, I don't really love betting into two other players. Seems too often that we're beat, so I check this one. The big lunch snap checks, and the button checks back. Interesting action when the turn comes the eight of clubs. So given this action, I think sometimes we might be good. Um, getting some flashbacks from that pocket tens hand where we were actually winning with even an ace and king on the board. Maybe the same situation can happen here. So I throw out a bet of $175, hoping to, you know, take a feeler bet, maybe take it down, but action just doesn't go our way when the big wand immediately puts in a raise to $500. The button folds and um, yeah, this stinks facing a raise. Clear cut fold now, not sure what was going on, but maybe he was trapping. I just let my hand go and he's nice enough to show us pocket eights for a turn set unfortunate turn to run into there. Couldn't take this one down. In the next spot, picking up the good old pocket jacks, the hand that everyone knows and loves. We're on the button and there's an ungun open to 20. The cutoff makes the call and we're definitely putting in a raise this time. Once again, I size up to $100. Action folds to this cutoff player who does this like F it, I call sort of way and calling his 100. Seems like a very weak hand or maybe some sort of pocket pair he wants to set mine. Anyways, he has less than $300 in the stack, so we're gonna see a flop, hoping to get it all of it in. The flop comes 885 Rainbow. Pretty good flop for us with our overpair, and I, hoping he has a pair himself. So I throw out a bet of $75, and he thinks about it before flicking in a call. So um, this flick just seems like a real physical tell that he doesn't really wanna be in here, but he's forced to be in here. When the turn comes a four, I, I definitely want to just milk in his stack as much as possible as he doesn't really have a whole lot left. He checks to me and I put in another bet this time, sizing down to $100. This player has like $170 in his stack. So at this point, like I'm praying for him to jam or maybe 
just make the call. Not 100% sure what's going on in his head, but ultimately he just folds. Thought my small little pricing, small little bets would get him to induce a jam. Sadly, it does not happen. We still take down the pot though. For the last interesting spot of the night with ace queen off suit in the big blind. Once again, there is an only on straddle. There's a button open to $30. The small blind rips it all in for about $200 in a stack, and now on to me. Like I said, we've been playing a lot of tournaments here and facing a 20 big blind jam with ace queen. We're not folding this one considering the configuration. So I put in a four bet just to isolate the field. I size up to $500, honestly praying that everyone else folds. That'd be pretty ideal. Thankfully, everyone does fold, and we're racing against pocket eights. Let's go to a runout. Oh. Your head. The flop comes in eights, of course. Why, why wouldn't it? We're pretty much dead. The turn actually brings a little bit of a sweat. The river, no help for us. This player has $226 in stack. We unfortunately have to pay this off. We don't win the race this time. So our session just wrapped up and uh, it ended a little bit shorter than what we wanted to. If you look around me right now, it is totally empty. Who knew that this place, the Venetian Poker Room, closes at 3 a.m. So we only played for about three hours. We started our session around midnight and it's totally empty now. Uh, this place used to be packed like 30 minutes ago, but um, pretty cool, I guess, but not cool that we had to cut our session short. But um, end of the day, our action was crazy uh, on our table. A lot of deep stacks, and unfortunately, uh, we couldn't really battle it out too much. We are in the game for 3,000, out of it for a whopping $3,032, profit of $32, um, there's that, but um, really cool to check out this room, I'm sure I'll be back for sure, but so let me know what you guys thought about this video, let me know in the comments below, smash that like button, it's always much appreciated, and if you're new to the channel, you made it this far, hit that subscribe button on the road to 100,000 subscribers, it'd be a crazy milestone to hit, but end of the day, thanks so much for watching, I'll see you guys next time, peace.